today we're going to be talking about Upgrade, so stay tuned. Welcome to The Real Review. Welcome to The Real Review, sponsored by Parametric and Lazy Ape Studios, where you get some of the latest happenings, real thoughts, and perspectives in the world of film and television. I am here with Matt Beyonce. Let me upgrade you. Hey. Yeah. Who am I, Matt? Everybody, I am here with Joel, the other Tom Hardy Cunningham. I like that. Yeah. He did kind of look weirdly <laughs> Tom Hardy-esque. Yeah. Uh, it's all good. Yeah. I, I, he's going to, he's going to, sorry. We'll get into that. <laughs> talking about talking about the movie we're going to be talking about yeah. today, Upgrade. Uh, we are super excited and happy to have you here watching and listening to the podcast today. And just a reminder, some of the ways that we like to do this, uh, Matt and I kind of have two sort of sides, perspectives on film and yeah. media. Uh, we're both learning. We're both uh, kind of understanding, growing in our knowledge of film we're flourishing and media. And we're flourishing and we're inviting else. you along with that journey to learn and grow with us. Uh, while Matt has more of a fan perspective and I tend to have more of a critic kind of analytic perspective. So yeah, totally. with that being said, Matt, why don't you give the listeners some ways to get connected? Y'all, y'all, y'all can get connected with us at our website, which is realreviewmedia.com, which will then take you to all of our social media links, which is Facebook and uh, Instagram and Twitter, all at Real Review Media. And then also um, our youtube.com slash The Real Review, where you can actually, if you're watching this now, that's where you're watching the video at. If you're not, that's where you can watch the video at. Um, and that's it. Oh, yeah. Email us, realreviewmedia at gmail.com with questions, concerns, comments. Fun stuff. Yeah. You know? Pictures. That's clean it. clean photos. Yeah. Photos <laughs> of just great things, I guess. Of Tom Hardy lookalikes. Yeah. That'd be awesome. Cool. <laughs> so we are talking about Upgrades, film that Matt and I both randomly got to see. Yeesh. We both saw separately. Yes. Together. Yes. For this week. And uh, a little Indeed. bit of a brief synopsis for this, then we'll get into it. Uh, set in the near future, technology controls nearly all aspects of life. But when Gray, a self-identified technophobe, has his world turned upside down, his only hope for revenge is an experimental computer chip implant called STEM, both mm -hmm. directed and written by Lee Wanell. Uh, it stars primarily Logan Marshall Green, who is our Tom Hardy lookalike as uh, Gray Trace. Yeah, let me say this, um, though. In this, he does particularly look a little bit like him, and maybe it's because we just saw the Venom trailers and kind of has that same vibe at the moment. But I got to say, dude, Logan Marshall, dude. <laughs> yeah, anyways, go ahead. Yeah, no worries. Uh, we've got Betty Gabriel as Cortez, uh, Michael Foster as Jeffries, uh, Harrison Gilbertson as Aaron, Benedict Hurdy as Fisk. We, we had a lot of people. I'm, I'm not, most of these people I don't actually recognize. Yeah, there's not a lot of the content. Betty I'm Gabriel's been a Blumhouse person. She's been doing a lot of Blumhouse things. Gotcha. Yeah. I feel like Harrison Gilbertson also looks like a couple different actors. Yeah. Um, that I've seen uh, specifically, I can't think of his name. Kind of looks like a Harrison, actually. That's really he interesting. He does kind of look like yeah. a Harrison. Yeah, because he's Odd a to Harrison. say, but very true. <laughs> cool. Um, so what were your thoughts, perspectives? I'm going to give mine. I really, really, really like this movie. Okay. I really liked it. Um, one thing that I think made this, you know, it's kind of a typical revenge tale, but I really liked it for a number of different reasons. I thought Logan Marshall Green was awesome. Uh, oh, shout out to Lee Wanell. He liked our uh, Twitter tweets. Hey, -oh. what's up? I know you're probably watching this every day, but you know. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Um, we loved your movie. I thought that, yeah, I thought the acting was really good. Um, but my favorite aspect of the film was the cinematography. I really loved it. It was very different, very creative. Yeah. And how it, it showed the difference between. Um, uh, gray when he was you know himself and then when stem took over like you see in the trailers it's very very like oh it just brings it to a new level i can't even yeah. i don't even know what it's called it's like this really queer like or like crazy like static well they had a couple shots where they used a technique i believe it was like a um it's like a framing technique where they they have an object which they are stabilizing uh -huh. And it rotated kind of around, right? So it makes the environment sort of around them look very distorted, yeah. And kind of, and they did a couple tracking like longer yeah, shots yeah, yeah. like that, where you had Logan running, or Gray, I guess in the yeah. film, Gray's running, and the camera's like focusing on his head, and so right. it, it felt very odd, yeah, and almost artificial, yeah, which I kind of liked. And that that there was a couple elements of the film that I really think played up 
mm-hmm. the overall style and theme and tone yeah. and feel for the film that at first I was a little bit unsure of, um, which one was the, the style of the cinematography, mm-hmm. the coloring, the lights, and the way that they did a lot of the production design. Yeah. Everything felt like just one step futuristic. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. and it didn't feel like Blade Runner. Minus the city it, shot. Right. There was like one city shot at the beginning. The other city shots were fine, but the, there was one in the beginning that was like, wow, that's really like, it reminded me of Dread, actually. Yeah, I, don't I know. could yeah. see that. Anyways. But it felt like it was like, it's not quite Blade Runner-esque yet, yeah. but it's like on its way to becoming more like that. Yeah. And I thought that was really interesting. And then the other thing, the third thing that really helped with that theme and tone was the music. Yeah. There was such a weird kind of sense to the to the music mm-hmm. it, it had like a sci-fi-esque feel it had almost a Blade Runner-esque yeah. feel with lots of like sci-fi padding and like yeah. tones and it it emphasized certain specific moments in a way that just kind of made you feel weird and the interesting thing about this movie I don't want to spoil it yeah. because there's some stuff that happens in it that you're just I did not see coming yeah um, it felt almost ex machina. Yeah, so that's the that's the first thing I thought of. I talked with a guy that I work with today. He's like, "Dude, have you ever seen ex machina?" I'm like, "Yes." Yeah, that's exactly yeah. And, and it was cool though. Yeah, because I was expecting more of just a straightforward revenge revenge movie. And here's the thing: I I thought like I, I went with my dad. I was like, I was like, hey. I, I bet this is what's going on. Like, there's a thing, like, Claire, I bet this is, like, right yeah. in the first 15, 20 minutes or whatever this stuff yeah. happens. I'm like, I bet this is what's happening right now. And then it got to them, like, yep. And then it took a step further. I was like, whoa, wait a minute. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like, yeah. wait a minute. I will say it felt, the stuff that kind of gets revealed felt a little forced. Yeah. Like, a little bit, like, eh, that seems a little too, like, we're just trying to make this fit within mm-hmm. the, what we wanted to happen in the film. But it was still interesting. Yeah. And it still made me think, and it, it, the cool thing about it as well is that it really did inform a number of aspects that you see throughout the course of the movie mm-hmm. that in any other type of movie, I feel like they would have just kind of had to have in there. Right. Like they would have just put it in there to just, it wouldn't have had any real in like input into the theme or yeah. the overall tone. But this film did such a great job of making the theme and the tone unexpected but still fit yeah. with everything that happens. So if that makes sense, I don't. I'm trying really hard to not spoil. It's okay. Um, the the best part, and it's weirdly like darkly comedic too yes, at times. Yeah, yeah. Um, like for example, I was laughing, but I, I felt bad for laughing because just like horrific things are happening while this is happening. So, like you see it in the, they, in the very first trailer that was released for this movie, you see when he lets STEM take over for the first time. Yeah, and. And and I gotta give credit to Logan Logan Marshall Green because I don't know how you do this choreography and then have your face it was translate so something completely yeah. different. Like his his body is like confuing to like a thousand percent, just yeah. being awesome. Yeah, and he's but like, his face is looking around in <laughs> horror. In cancer, like yeah. he's like, oh my gosh, what am I doing? It was great. I, don't I mean, know the, how you do that? Yeah, like he's doing like kung fu moves. He's not even looking like, at the guy. Like, like you yeah, know, he, yeah. He, he, you see it in the trailer, but like he slaps him in the head or hits him in the head with a glass he's like oh god i'm sorry yeah. like or whatever you well, know? <laughs> and there was a cut and that's one of the things i love so much about kind of the building theme and tone that really gets brought in so much strongly at the end things happen and it's it like there's some real violent like oh, yeah. visceral violent moments especially in that kind of scene yeah, yeah, yeah. and i was like whoa yeah. like that just came out of nowhere right but when you get to the point where you finally understand why those things have occurred mm-hmm. and I don't even, I must want to do like a little bit of a spoiler talk. We'll, with we'll it. do a spoiler talk. Okay, Let's do a spoiler cool. talk after this. When it, when it finally fulfills itself in the theme and the tone, you're like, oh, yeah. that's why that was so like awful. It right. was just in the film. Like it just, it makes sense. So yeah, hats off as well to Logan. Yeah. I mean, for the job he did acting because oh he had to fill a number of different roles uh, yeah. as far as like the paraplegic role. <laughs> and the, yeah. Like there were so many different yeah. physical acting things that he had to do in this film that would have yeah. just been It's really so funny. I remember the first time I ever saw him was in 24, like season four or something yeah. like that. And yeah. I was like, oh yeah, I didn't like him because his character was kind of an annoying kid, but he's really coming to his own. I liked you in Devil, if you're watching Logan. Devil, <laughs> I thought that was pretty good. Anyways. I didn't like devil, but yeah. whatever. <laughs> it's all right. Yeah, but I i mean, there was a lot of really good things to say. I think more on the negative side, it, um, there was actually, I felt like one or two scenes audio-wise that felt a little off. <laughs> See, I know that I sounds weird. I that stuff. Well, that's, that's funny. There was like some weird, like kind of 
effects that they were putting on a couple of the vocals at times, and uh, like the car rides and things. And I was just kind of like, I, I don't know. Maybe it was the theater. Yeah, and it's hard to judge with some of that stuff. Um, I'm trying to think of what else. I, I thought, I felt like him and his wife, the story of him and his wife in the film, their chemistry was a bit questionable to me. Really? Okay. Like they feel, they seemed very like, personality wise that they kind of fit but as far as like what they were doing with their lives very different and yeah. it didn't really make sense it would have made sense to me in the script if they almost weren't as close as they were right. like if they were kind of like well you're this kind of person I'm this kind of person and we're kind of stuck together that would have made a lot more sense but then it me. wouldn't have made the the loss of his wife is right heartbreaking. no I get it, it right. but it felt like more like they needed her to be a certain way in order for certain things to happen right in the film um, I can't really think of anything negative off the top of my head. I really enjoyed it. I was, my jaw like dropped several times in the movie. Um, but the, I would say the only thing that negative is, is the way I felt emotionally kind of towards the end of the movie. And yeah. it's not that it was bad. It was just, I, <laughs> we could talk about it in a minute. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> we can talk about it in a minute. Um, yeah, I mean, there's so many positives. I thought the fight scenes, the action sequences were the, like, all... The noise when Stem takes over is like... Mm. Yeah. Like, I thought that was cool. All those fight scenes were just super intense and interesting. I thought that cool. sort of the commentary they had on the police state and the building yeah. of you know technology within that was really interesting thematically. Yeah. Um, that's, that's the kind of stuff... I love films about those topics, yeah. which is like when humanity goes too far mm -hmm. with itself, with, yep. with its hubris into, you know, creating tech and creating lifestyle options, when that starts to go so far that it actually then negatively impacts us, that's mm -hmm. like a cool theme for me, an interesting topic. Yeah. Um, and there's like, you know, ideas of overcoming tragedy and loss. Yeah, yeah, and yeah, it's yeah. like, there's just a lot of really good resign. It was very unexpected. Yeah. I yeah. was really just expecting this to be like an action romp. Yeah. Like to go in. But and it just got like, it got like super philosophical. <laughs> it did. Um, yeah. Let me say this too. Um, I don't recommend this for any children. <laughs> oh no. People. It's yeah. very violent. Yeah. Um, three very, or four scenes. Very like, R rated. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I wouldn't even recommend this for just a casual moviegoer, and really, unless you really want to get into some like like heavy action, uh, very potentially uh, uh, emotionally heavy stuff, potentially. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I thought it was great. Yeah. yeah. So let's why don't we do a little bit of spoiler talk then? Let's you get, let's rate it. Rate it. What um, you got? I've thought about this one a lot. Yeah. It's pretty high. Mm -hmm. I'm giving it a ninety. That's what I'm giving it. Oh, cool. Yeah. All right. Sweet. Give it 90, a ninety. Brothers. High five. High five, 90 yeah. brother. Cool. So we're going to get into some spoiler talk then if you yeah. don't want to hear anything about the film. Yep. Before you have had a chance to see it, turn it off now. Mm -hmm. I'm going to count us in. Five, four, three, two, one, and pretty everybody much everybody dies. dies. Yeah. <laughs> everybody Except dies. for Gray, but he kind of dies too. Dies. So that that's where I, I don't even know if I would rank it as a negative because it fits the story, but it was kind of like this weird pseudo like happy ending slash not happy ending for Gray. Uh, because that, yeah. he's like trapped in his own subconscious. Yeah. Um, but he's like with his wife. Right. You know, well, and he's and living, living the dream in his yeah. dreams, I guess. Yeah. That's and, absolutely where it took on the ex machina. Yeah, exactly. Like 100% of like, you know, this one creature that has been manipulating circumstances mm -hmm. to try and escape. Exactly. That's kind of like the whole idea behind right. the theme and the tone, which was really cool to me because... Throughout the film, I saw this happening. I was marketing in my in my mind that they were making this idea and this concept of like how far technology has gone into everybody's lives right. and how it's become almost to the point where they're not living their own lives mm -hmm. and it's become a negative for a lot of people and it's overwhelmingly controlling people. Mm -hmm. And they kept doing that. And I was like, I thought that was going to be a secondary message. Mm -hmm. I thought that was going to be like, when you finish the film, it's going to be more story about a straightforward just kind of revenge plot right. about, you know, Gray trying to take out the people that killed his wife. So when that twist happened, I knew there was more to it. Yeah. But when, and I, and I like, I always knew that those guys that were trying to capture him worked for, um, yeah, Aaron. me too. And that was the thing in the first, I was like, this is, I bet he hired these people. Yeah, like I always knew that, but I didn't realize that it was actually because of the control of STEM. Right, and that exactly. was like, because when you see that, then the whole, everything they've like layered on and had this idea of, you know, the control of the cops, you know, droids and the the machines that, you know, do the protein shakes and yeah. the way that he can pretty much, and he even says that he's like, these machines pretty much can do everything for me. Right. 
when you keep hearing that and hearing that and then that really fulfills itself and that becomes what the movie actually is about right, when right. you're not excited. That was like, what? Right. And it was so cool. One thing I like too is that you got glimpses of Grey living in that subconscious for yeah. a minute too. They tease that before the actual end of the right. movie. They tease him like in the dream it was. He's like, that wasn't a dream. That was yeah. more than a dream. Or like when he actually sees his wife in that like VR room that the hacker was trying to reboot, you know? Yeah. I was like, that's little things. That there can... were so many elements like that yeah. where they're constantly saying, they're they're giving you like little hints of where it's building towards. Because like yeah. she even says to the hacker girl, um, why would anybody want to live in these, like, why would anybody want to live in these right. virtual? And she's like, well, sometimes that's better than reality. Yeah. And it's like, that's fulfilling. That's like self-fulfilling that yeah. that ends up becoming his reality later. And in that context where he's seeing all these people living in these false worlds, mm -hmm. He ends up seeing his wife, yep. which then later becomes the reality that he's living. Right. So again, it's just like there's so many elements to the story that that fold in so perfectly yep. later in the story that were just so beautifully well done. And, yeah, for sure. You know, he's at the beginning of the movie, it, it even shows his arc in that because he's very mistrusting yeah. of tech mm -hmm. and he doesn't like tech and he's not going towards it. And the only reason that they're able to they want to use him is because of that, because he's somebody that hasn't given to yep. being, you know, all this tech stuff. He doesn't have his body altered in any ways. Because of that, yeah. he is the person that they choose as a target, yeah. where STEM does at least. Yeah. So the only thing I would say, and this is kind of the, the element that it, it feels a little bit like Meh, with that ending, is there's there's some elements to that idea of STEM having manipulated everything that feel a bit like, well, what about that? Like, what about, how does, what about, you know, like with Aaron's character. Yeah. I never really got how he was being effectively manipulated by STEM. Like what was the leverage? Yeah, because yeah. he was the only one that could create the the chip. Maybe, uh, so he had the option of just not doing it, but he still decided to because he said he was controlled by him. And I don't know if Aaron even did have I think a chip maybe inside he, of him. It may have been a manipulate, manipulation, kind of like how Logan Marshall Green's character was. In some way. Manipulated. Yeah. Like, hey, I like, I like your work. You know, whatever scientists, yeah. uh, let's figure this out. I think this guy would be a good candidate for it's me. Definitely kinda. possible. I don't know. I, but it we did, don't know. They again, didn't explain that, it. Yeah, they didn't explain it super well. And it just felt like there's a little bit of like inconsistencies yeah. of unawareness. And then additionally, as much as I really like that plot line of sort of the main antagonist guys, that group of bad guys being mm -hmm. their own. Like the the religion almost. Like they're like upgraded people. Yeah, yeah. That just didn't really lead into anything significant. Right, right, right. It was used as an element of the story, but it just didn't really yeah. play. And it was more of just like an an added yeah. character thing. I thought that was going to become something much more significant mm -hmm. that didn't really play out. But some of those fight scenes, I mean, man, when he he's fighting him in the house, I forget the main bad, the bad guy's name, but the first fight, yeah. and he just grabs that knife and just like, <laughs> I was like, oh, yeah. I was he showed so that disgusting. I yeah. <laughs> and blows the guy's head off. Yeah. And all those fights were just so viscerally crazy. I yeah. mean, he just walks in, his head's down. He just shoots those two dudes in the head at the very end of the movie. Yeah. He's like, whoa. Well, and when he's uh, fighting the main bad guy in the apartment and they're just like, Ch -ch 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 -ch. and it's so robotic. Yeah. And it's just the way that they were, it was just so interesting to me. Uh, that you want to get a gun implanted in your hand? No, <laughs> I would. I would be the guy that accidentally shoots himself in the yeah, foot. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you're shaking somebody's hand. No, I'm yeah, not. Yeah, I didn't make that. <laughs> yeah, so but, that's all good. Yeah, so many cool things with that. Um, yeah. So overall, happy. Any yeah. additional thoughts? No, I just I enjoyed it. I, I again pleasantly surprised. Yeah, I did not anticipate it. And I hope to, they don't make a sequel. I hope they don't either, but uh, I think Blumhouse has got another uh, potential hit on their hands. So yeah, we'll they opened it up to have some avenues that they mm -hmm. could definitely pursue with the sequels. I mean, you've got yeah. the hacker girl who kind of seems to be part of some cadre of people that is trying to prevent, you know, machines from like taking over the, the world. Opener was cool. Yeah, they, the they didn't. Was they cool. didn't show the. Uh, they didn't show the titles of the production companies. Yeah, that had just, AI voice, right. which like, again ties into the whole idea that it's all yeah. being controlled and manipulated yeah. by STEM. That's kind of cool. I like that. So I thought that was cool. Um, and then obviously we still have Gray, who's out there, STEM, yeah. who's out there, and who knows what. They're... Maybe Gray makes a comeback and tries to take over. They that might become part uh, of it. I mean, it was just it was such an interesting twist there at the end and it was so cool because the whole movie you're kind of like his body is operating a little awkwardly mm -hmm. but then at the very end it's just full on like yeah. robo mode and robo you're just like yeah. and I love that little thing at the end again the movie did this so many times where something would be a part of the story and then later on it would come back in in such an interesting way where in the very beginning of the film he cuts his finger and he like he, yeah. he like goes like that and then at the very end Stem just tastes the blood that's on his hand it was yeah. like 
perfectly tied in. Yep. It's like the beginning and the end of the film. Yep. It starts off with a guy who hates technology and pretty much just lives in the old school mindset, yep. becoming Becomes the most advanced robotic technology, technology <laughs> in the entire world after being manipulated. And you think when you're going to the film that it's just going to be a story of revenge. Right. It's not, and that's it's why it was like, oh my gosh, yeah. such a good movie. Yeah. So, it's yeah. good stuff. Good surprise hit for me. It's going to probably be up there. Yeah. Oh, yeah. To our top 10 it's up year. there for sure. So cool. All right. Anything else? No, that's it. All right. We're going to go ahead and wrap things up here on the podcast then for you. Uh, some ways to get connected. Once again, we have our Facebook, which is facebook.com slash realviewmedia. True story. Our, our website, which is realviewmedia.com. Uh, Twitter and Instagram, which are both at realviewmedia. I'd love to get connected with you on any of those platforms. Again, thanks, Lee Winnell. Uh, great film there. Yeah. Uh, and emails. We'd love to hear from you. Realreviewmedia at gmail.com. As always, spelled R-E-E-L. Love to get your thoughts and perspectives. Yeah. Anything else? No, that's Looked it. Like you were about to say something. No, like, no. We're good. All right, cool. It's been real. It's been real. Pew, pew, pew.